In this video, we are going to have a look at the Lawa C Dreamer Full Frame 11mm 4.5 lens. Kiala, good morning everyone, which Wong here. Welcome back to the channel. Recently on this channel, I have reviewed the Lawa 9mm f5.6 lens. That's probably one of the most ridiculous lens that I have ever reviewed. And by ridiculous, I mean how ridiculously wide that lens is. 9mm for a full frame lens is something that I never thought is possible. But Lawa made it and that's also a pretty compact lens for a 9mm focal length. And now, today, we are going to look at another ultra wide angle lens from Lawa. This time, it is slightly not as ridiculously wide, but it is still very wide. It is a 11mm full frame lens and it is a little bit faster, but the size is still very compact, just like the 9mm f5.6 lens. While this Lauer 11mm lens is not as wide as the 9mm Lauer lens, the angle view is still 120 degrees, which is still very wide and a lot wider than most other ultra wide angle lenses, for example, 12mm or 14mm. Comparing this lens with those other ultra wide angle lenses, it still captures a much wider angle and also give you a very different kind of uh, perspective if you compare to those ultra wide angle lenses. This is my 25mm micro four foot lens. If you put them side by side, if you ignore the lens hood, which is um, a building one, you cannot remove the lens hood. The size of these two lenses are very similar and this is a micro four foot lens and this is a full frame lens. So you can get some idea how big, or actually I should say how small this lower 11mm lens is. This lens is available for most of the full frame cameras in the market, including the Sony e mount the Leica M, the Nikon Z, and also the L mount The sample that I have here is for the L mount but optically, all the different versions are exactly the same. So even if you are not an L mount shooter, this review would still apply to the different version because the optical performance for all the different mount versions should be exactly the same. Okay, let's talk about the design and build quality of this lens. I've already mentioned that this is a very small and lightweight lens for such an ultra wide angle lens. And it is a completely mechanical and fully manual lens. Look at the back of the lens. There's no electronic contacts. So um, we have the lens hoop at the front, which is built into the lens, so you cannot detach it from the lens. The lens has a 62 millimeter front filter thread, so that's great for photographers who like to use filter when they are taking landscape photo. But if you are like me, who would use step up ring with your filter, the non-removable lens hood means you cannot actually use step-up ring with this lower lens. It comes with a metal front lens cap which fits very nicely onto the lens and very securely as well so you don't have to worry about it may fall off the lens when you have it fitted onto it. And at the front, we have the aperture ring, which starts from f4.5, which is the maximum aperture, and go all the way to f22. And the aperture ring has clicks, which I really like. And it has a click at each one of the stop, f5.6, f8, f11, f16, and then f22. At the back of the lens, we have the focus ring here, which has to travel through around 90 degrees which seems to be really good for an ultra wide angle lens. And one thing I really like is that it has the up focus tab, which um, a lot of the Leica M mount lenses has. If you are a Leica M mount shooter, you will know how good this focus tab is because not only it make it a lot easier to change the focus, but it also means you don't really even have to look at the lens when you are changing the focus because you can remember what sort of angle approximately is like correspond to a certain focus distance. So it allow you to change the focus very easily and also very quickly. 
the overall build quality is pretty much what I would expect from a lower lens, very solid and very nice. Next, let's talk about the image quality and let's start from the image sharpness. All the image sharpness test photos were shot in the multi-shot 96 megapixel high resolution mode. If you look at the center, even at the maximum aperture f4.5, the center sharpness is already very good. So even when I stop down, the center sharpness only improved marginally. And now let's look at the corners. When I look at the 96 megapixel high resolution shot at 100%, at the maximum aperture 4.5, the corner looks a little bit soft. When I stop down to f5.6, the corner sharpness improved a bit, but it seems like f8 is the aperture that can give you the maximum corner sharpness. Distortion-wise, Lawa didn't call it a ZOD lens, which probably means this lens doesn't meet their pretty strict requirement that classify lenses as a COD lens. And when I look at my sample photos, I do see there is a bit of distortion um, in my photos. It's not terrible. And actually I think it is pretty good for such a ultra wide angle lens. And one thing is Lauer actually sent me a lens correction profile that I can use with this lens, which largely remove any kind of distortion. So if you buy this lens, you can go to Lauer's website and you can download the lens correction profile for this Lauer 11mm lens. Vignetting is quite interesting with this 11mm Lauer lens. When I look at the blank white wall test photo I shot with this lens at the maximum aperture, I can see there is some vignetting. I don't think it's too bad for such an ultra wide angle lens. And the interesting thing is, when I start to stop down the lens, the amount of vignetting actually doesn't change too much. It improves slightly, but even when I stop down all the way to f22, which is the minimum aperture, the amount of vignetting is still very similar to what is like at the maximum aperture. I guess the reason is because of the compact size and also the pretty small front element of the lens. So even when you stop down, there is still a bit of vignetting that you cannot completely remove. It's a bit of trade-off to get such a compact ultra wide angle lens. When shooting at the maximum aperture, there's no sun stars in your photo. But once you stop down to f5.6, then you can get some very beautiful 10 point sun stars in your photo. And to my eyes, the sun stars are most beautiful when you are shooting at the f16 aperture. The minimum focus distance of this lens is 19 cm, which is pretty close, but because of the ultra wide angle, so the maximum magnification is only 0 0.1 times. So it is not exactly a um, macro lens or semi macro lens, but still good enough for you to take some nice close up photos. Lens flare control is really quite well with this lower 11mm 4.5 lens. Even when I'm shooting directly into the sun at the maximum aperture, there's only a very small amount of lens flare. And the results from my nighttime lens flare test is also pretty good. There's only very small amount of ghosting when I shoot into a bright object at night. The only time that I have a little bit of lens flare issue with this lens is when I was trying to do some astrophotography at night, the street lights from nearby cause a bit of lens flare uh, with this lower lens and because of its really wide angle of view, so it's quite hard for me to block the light to remove the lens flare. There are many reasons why I review so many lower lenses on this channel. I like how they always try to create some pretty unique lens but I also like how they design their lenses. Creating a 11mm full frame lens is not easy, but creating a 11mm full frame lens that is also compact and lightweight is even harder. But that's the challenge that Lauer is not afraid of. In terms of the image quality, the overall image quality is very decent. It's not without flaws though, for example, the vignetting, I would like to see it a little bit less when you stop down and also the corner sharpness could be a little bit better. But because 
the lens is so small, so compact, all those tiny amount of flaws, I think is completely forgivable because compared to most other ultra wide angle lenses in the market, that is so big, so small. So even if you bought them, the chances are you may just leave it at home because unless you purposely go out to take some landscape photos, you probably don't want to carry it with you. But with this lower 11 mm lens, it's just so small that you would just chuck it on the side of your camera bag, um, even if you're not planning to use it because it doesn't really matter, it's so small. And if you just happen to see something that you want to capture with a ultra wide angle lens, then you have the lens with you. And to me, that is something that is very important. No matter how good the lens is or no matter how good a camera is, if you don't have it with you, then it's completely useless. So with a lightweight, small design like this lower lens, that is probably the most practical ultra wide angle lens that you can buy in the market right now.